Hello everyone, my name is Noelle Marshall and welcome to the new vlogcast from the Peace Pentagon Hub. The Peace Pentagon is a conference and training center for progressive programs and sacred activism. The Peace Pentagon is located at the beautiful Oracle Institute campus in Independence, Virginia. And our hub vlogs focus on different sectors of society where everyday synergistic solutions are emerging to help us build a new world. Today, I am doing a Peace Pentagon blog for the economic sector. And I'm gonna bring in our host here, our guest here, uh, David Cobb. David Cobb, Keith Cobb is uh, a political activist. He ran for vice president of, he ran for president of the United States in 2004 with the Green Party. And uh, this past year, and, and perhaps is still campaign manager for Jill Stein of the Green Party. And last time we were together, David, we spoke about a, a Green Way Forward and the podcast series that you're doing. And was, I've gotten great reception to that, and you share with us a lot about the Green Party. But today we're gonna switch gear because he's a multi-dimensional guy. And so we're gonna be talking about the, um, talking about an economic solution that he is doing uh, in Humboldt, California. And so David, I'm gonna turn the talking stick over to you and uh, we'll just kind of uh, converse uh, along the way about what you're doing. We'll talk for about 10 or 20 minutes. And um, I, I hope the idea that you bring up is gonna spread because I'm really excited. Well, thank you so much, Noel. First, let me just say thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with folks through the Peace Pentagon Hub. Uh, I've had an opportunity to look at the website and get a little bit deeper, and I am quite impressed uh, by the vision and the thoughtfulness uh, and the interconnectedness. Of course, last time we talked, uh, we were really talking about the Green Party as a political party, democracy and governance. This time, we're going to be talking about economics specifically. Uh, and as you know, Noel, I consider myself a peaceful revolutionary. Um, I am a revolutionary because I believe that we need to restructure this society. We need new social, political, and economic institutions. And I'm committed to that restructuring going forward in a peaceful, nonviolent manner. And that's the reason it's important that we really drill down on economics. Because remember that the word economics comes from Greek, uh, and it really just means uh, yeah, eco is home, and uh, the, the, the nomics part is the study and management of. So really, economics just means the management of home. And traditionally, uh, in economics classes, they talk about uh, that as like the household. Uh, but I want to point out that ecosystem means the, 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 the understanding of home in a different way. So what we say at Cooperation Humboldt is that it is absolutely critical that we create uh, an economic system, how we meet our needs so that it is both ecologically sustainably, sustainable and socially just. Uh, and what we know is that the current capitalist system is neither sustainable nor just. So right. we are trying to normalize conversations about the need to move from a dominator competition econ economy to a uh, co collaborative, cooperative power with economics. Right. And, you know, I hear people quote um, Darwin theory and it actually was a theory but you know about uh, uh survival of the fittest but that wasn't his point at all it's cooperation it's cooperation that's in how fact, we survive Dar anyway. darwin himself actually said that that homo sapiens would not have survived as a species had we not been cooperators and one of the books that i want to encourage the viewers of this uh, uh vlog to look at is a seminal work by Rianne Eisler called The Chalice and the Blade. And, and in that, she actually outlines how human societies all across the globe existed for thousands of years in a cooperative manner. And it was one where the sacred feminine was uh, honored and acknowledged, as was the sacred masculine, 
honored and acknowledged and that there was an understanding of the integration there. And of course, new science is teaching us that even that binary is, is, too, um, is too restrictive and that we should actually understand uh, a non-patriarchal horizontal way as a, a full spectrum. All I'm getting at is this. Cooperation Humboldt is an effort to prove in our local economy where I live, work, and play in Humboldt County, California, that we can get all of our needs met without exploiting or oppressing anyone, without allowing anyone to exploit or oppress us, and that we can do that in an ecologically sustainable manner. It's really quite simple. Well, David, you've sold me on all the concepts. Now I can just hear people going like, what's the secret? What's the secret? What are you doing? So, you know, I'm glad that you asked that because one of the things that we've said is first we have to get grounded in our intellectual orientation, our philosophy, our theoretical understanding. Because, you know, theory is important because theory is a, 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 the whole idea of a theory is to help explain what is happening and to be able to predict what will happen. So action without theory is actually just sort of like, it's just motion. And maybe good things will happen, but without a good theoretical grounding, if anything good happens, it's really by accident. Uh, but likewise, uh, theory without action is just navel-gazing contemplation. So I do want to say that one of the things that we did at Cooperation Humboldt is went through a very extensive uh, study process. And if you take a look at our website, cooperationhumboldt.org, mm -hmm. uh, you'll find under our resources section, we did a deep dive on a, 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 just a short 20-page essay from Emily Kawano of the Solidarity Economics uh, Network uh, called The Solidarity Economy, putting people and planet uh, over profit. Then uh, we did another short uh, reading session, also about 15, 20 pages, uh, uh, on a pamphlet called From Banks and Tanks to Cooperation and Caring, uh, from the good folks at Movement Generation. And that helped really ground us into, okay, how are we going to actually put this into practice? And for right. us, that meant looking at the different sectors of society, the different ways, the needs that we have to prove and to, to, to concretize that we can meet those needs to survive and thrive right. in, without exploitation or oppression. So for us, we broke it down to food, production, and distribution, housing, health care, art and culture, um, <clears throat> uh, finance, uh, infrastructure, uh, and child care. So this brought education and child care. So all of those are our program areas. And then we are starting slowly and methodically to develop specific examples of what concretely that looks like in our community. And I'll start with food production and distribution because that's the most developed for us. Wonderful. Under food production and distribution, we are, we are looking at the creation of, uh, like, we know what our goal is. Our goal is to create uh, an urban food forest in our community. The idea that everybody <clears throat> has access to enough fresh, nutritious, organic food to eat that is not commodified. In other words, everybody gets enough food to eat regardless of the ability to pay for it. We believe access to food is a fundamental human right and should not be subject uh, to only having it if you have enough money. So in order to, to do that, we, we envision a urban food forest in Eureka, California, where in public spaces where there are currently, like in public parks, there are currently you know, elm trees or, or redwood trees or, or fir trees. Imagine fruit trees and nut trees. Imagine in the public spaces uh, growing chard and lettuce uh, and radishes and other uh, uh, fairly easy uh, things mm -hmm. uh, and that the community is involved in helping uh, to produce those things and taking what they need and uh, helping to assist in the production of it to their ability. It's actually quite simple. Now, to get from where we are now to that vision, we think there need to be some, in, in, some independent steps thereof. Here are some of the independent steps. We okay. have already started the process to build what uh, 
are known as food walls in some public spaces. Imagine, if you will, a six to eight foot wall at a slight incline, and along that incline, you have layers where growing in the wall are lettuce, radishes, uh, uh, small uh, bits of, uh, of food, and it's important to recognize those food walls are in high traffic public spaces. Uh, and the idea is anybody can participate. If you uh, are just walking by and maybe you'll find out about it, we'll have information about how to create additional food walls uh, and creating a, a process by which people are beginning to understand and think about food differently. It's not just something you go to the grocery store to get or something right. that you can only grow in your own garden, but actually making it a very public phenomenon. So right. that's there's the food there's wall. Well, let me just let me just interject here that I don't think uh, a lot of people realize that um, our food uh, travels somewhere between three and six thousand miles and is sprayed with chemicals to keep it from ripening until they arrive in port for distribution. And uh, that, so to see to that, see something growing locally, uh, you know, you're breaking a paradigm there, which I think is beautiful. Well, thank you, and that's exact. You're exactly right about the problem of the corporatized. Uh, food production and distribution system under a capitalist economy, it doesn't matter really, uh, all that matters is profit. Uh, instead of thinking about uh, Mother Earth as a living organism that we are part of. Mm -hmm. So the food wall is a concrete example of breaking that paradigm. Here's another. Okay. Uh, we are uh, going to be launching uh, actually just this spring, little free pantries uh, across Eureka. Uh, you may be familiar with the little free libraries, yes. those uh, wonderful little uh, things where people just put up in their front yard uh, little small libraries that might contain five, six uh, books and people take and give as they please, yes? Right. Imagine doing that with non-perishable food items. We are creating little free pantries and we are going to uh, just make non-perishable food items uh, available throughout neighborhoods. Again, we know that there are already uh, food banks, which are wonderful, uh, but people still have to go to those in a very centralized location. What we're trying to do is decentralize the entire process, uh, and that allows households to actually begin to share with one another uh, amongst the households, but also for people who are houseless to know that they are welcome in this community. Uh, and that we're not trying to shove them off into the margin and, and, that, uh, and to make them ashamed, but instead to welcome them into our community because they are here and they are part of this community. That, that is such a, for me, personal uh, point because uh, our foster daughter, uh, she has a green card to be in the United States and she married an undocumented. And they're in a situation right now where they're homeless and uh, living in their truck. And, you know, when I tried to say, well, what about this resource, that resource, this resource, they said, you know, mom, we can't go in there because he's undocumented. And, uh, you know, I, right. I can get only, you know, $50 worth of, of food, but um, I can't, he can't get anything. So to know that there's an open door that, that you know, they're, um, you know, I just, like I said, this personally just, strikes my heart that you're doing that. So thank you. And, and well, and thank you for sharing that personal story uh, with your daughter and uh, husband, uh, you know, and the very fact that uh, there's, uh, you know, uh, like that, that, that human beings are de deprived of the things that they need to survive and thrive based on documentation status uh, is shameful. I'm proud to tell you that we're working on a sanctuary county ordinance uh, uh, here, it, it sort of again, everything is connected, Noel. So yeah. you know, the food uh, issue gets connected back to the governance issue, gets connected back to the media issue, uh, much like the Peace Pentagon Hub does it with your interconnected, uh, interrelated sectors. We're trying to do it at a very local level. So we've talked about the food walls, we've talked about the little free pantries, we've talked about the ur urban food forest. I also want to put in a quick plug for something that we're calling Farm My Yard, uh, which is, uh, a, 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 we know that there are a lot of people of uh, the, the baby boomer generation 
uh, who have uh, homes, and many of those homes have front or backyards uh, that they either don't have the time, capacity, or even interest into gardening. We also know that a lot of young people, especially millennials, would love to be gardening, uh, but don't have access to land, and the capitalist economy is making it very difficult for people to break into that. So what we are in the process of doing is going neighbor uh, to neighbor to find uh, people who are willing to allow people to garden in their, to, to basically pair people who have uh, backyards that would allow people to garden, uh, people who don't have access to land who would like to garden, pair them together and not in an exploitive way. Uh, instead, uh, they share the, the bounty. Uh, and so uh, the idea being, of course, that uh, for folks who, m who might want to actually get into farming and gardening uh, uh, as, a, as a lifestyle, perhaps they might get into several gardens on the same block and then begin uh, to create an ability to start to sell at farmer's markets uh, and, and other roadside sands and so forth. So the Farm My Yard is something uh, that again tries to break down the, the this typical paradigm of you know private property ownership and get into a sense of let's do this as a community. That is so totally awesome. I've not heard of uh, farm my yard. Is that already a, a a term? I've never heard that one before. Uh, that's you know, excellent. I'm not sure if the term farm my yard uh, it has got a lot of play, but if you go to cooperationhumboldt.org, you'll see every one of these things outlined and resources uh, linked to other communities because uh, every one of these things is happening in other places as well. What we're trying to do is frankly do all of them at once in food production and mm -hmm. to move towards a public bank under finance and move towards uh, cooperative housing arrangements under shelter and move towards a healthcare cooperative in our local economy. So again, like for us, we are trying to actually do in our small local community, all of these things at once in an interrelated way. That's wonderful. Thank you for showcasing these ideas. And uh, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to share about that before we close our time together. I found it very intriguing, but uh, go ahead, David. Well, thank you so much, Noel. I just want to say again, thank you to you individually for this conversation. I want to thank uh, the Peace Pentagon Hub for creating a space for these kind of conversations and multiple conversations like this. Uh, and want to encourage folks, if you've been inspired by what you've seen, to go to either our website and our Facebook page, like us on Facebook, Send us an email, get on our list at cooperationhumboldt.org, uh, and let's get connected and build networks of local communities that are actually doing this. So my point is this. I love the fact that you and perhaps other viewers are inspired and excited by what you're hearing we're doing, and what I'm saying is lovingly putting it back on you, the viewer. Do it in your community, and then let's network peer-to-peer, -peer, community to community. Absolutely. That's the way we're going to build this thing. That's the way we're going to build the new world. So thank you very much, David Keith Cobb, for being with us today. And um, I'm just going to close this out by sharing a little bit more about the Peace Pentagon Hub, where this uh, video will be posted with our other vlogs on the sectors of the wheel. And um, let me just bring that up right here. So I want to tell you just a little bit more about the Peace Pentagon. Um, this is our, our important actions and events are listed here on this website. And uh, we share critical events and critical news that support our mission of protecting the truth, sharing the love, and following the light. Finally, I just want to add, if you're interested in volunteering at the Peace Pentagon Hub or living full time in a micro community comprised of cr cultural creatives, we invite you to contact us through the hub and check out our Valley of Light community at www.theoracleinstitute.com. So with that, I'm just going to come back here to this page here, give you a great uh, uh, blessing of thanks and uh, such a delight to speak with you always. And uh, I know our paths as we We'll, we'll cross again, but uh, there's never any moss growing under your feet, David, and it's always green. 
<laughs> so thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for what you're doing. Much love. All right, much love. Bye-bye.